Greetings, ladies and gentlemen and students, and welcome to the Library of Monsters. If you can't tell by the name of the video that you clicked to watch, we got a little bit of a special here today. Today, we got a top 10 video. Yeah, yeah, I know, everyone does these, but there's a very good reason for that. They're just fun to do. We live in a society that loves to categorize and scrutinize their favorite fandoms. Games, characters, movies, and even real life people are not safe in this pop culture callback. However, like always, I'm going to be a bit different from everyone else. You can find top 10 monsters, aliens, or kaijus all over the place. Which is fine, albeit a bit of a large group to try to just single down to just 10 characters though. I always like my list to be slightly more focused on their subjects, which is what I plan to do today. Welcome to the Library of Monsters Top 10 Big Bad Killer Bugs. Now before we get to this list, we gotta get a few things out of the way here. First and foremost, this is my list, a carefully crafted arrangement of characters that have in one way or another emotionally spoke to me throughout my life. Whether that was when I was an impressionable youth that pretty much liked any movie that was put before my eyes, or an as an adult that began to appreciate the subtle nuances of story and character that might be lost in some of those dated effects of those said films. I'm not going to be picking the most powerful and deadliest of these monsters, I'm going to be picking what I like, no matter how corny some of them might be by today's standards. Now, we only have two rules for potential candidates here. Rule number one, you gotta be from a movie. No TV shows, comic books, or video games. We gotta narrow it down just a little bit here. So, you won't be seeing anything from the Ultraman, Mirror Man, Fire Man, or whatever man universe. Even if there are some pretty gnarly bugs in those shows. And rule number two, while your size doesn't really matter, you could be a normal sized insect or a city destroying kaiju, you gotta be based on an actual insect. Fictional or non-fictional. A form of complicated life of invertebrates that have at least six legs and three part segmented bodies. Now, you can have variations on this, like a fly with only four limbs, hint, hint, but it has to be based on some sort of insect. So no worms, snails, slugs, centipedes, or scorpions. Oh, and above all, no spiders. Honestly, I could do a top ten of giant spiders and scorpions easy with the amount of films on those guys. Hmm. Now there's an idea. Oh well. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get some honorable mentions out of the way as well. For that, we actually have five noteworthy bugs. Now, while I do love each and every single one of these monsters, I will admit, there are some issues I have with their films. They just didn't have that big of an impact on me when I first viewed them, for one reason or another. Like I said, I like these bugs, but they just don't have that special niche to come into the rankings of this list. The mutant wasp from the monster from Green Hell have that 50s archaic style of design. It's a form of design I actually do enjoy a lot. It cuts out all the necessary clutter to a character and gets the meat of it. Unfortunately, the film is a bit of a bore and you don't get any good bug action to around the middle and the end of the film. Cool monster, but it is certainly a little bit flawed. Beginning of the End, on the other hand, has tons of bug action. Sadly though, it's just normal grasshoppers that are superimposed to look like giants in the film. It's incredibly cheap, but I love it. Peter Graves gives an awesome performance, and the movie does speed along at a pretty brisk pace. It's the most infamous of the giant bugs of the 50s, that's for sure, but it'll always have a special place in my heart. The Judas bug from the film Mimic come off like some kind of 80s serial killer. They stalk their prey and strike from the shadows. They have very cool designs. The immaculate detail in their faces are truly marking points for practical effects, both with their human-like disguise and their natural monstrous features. The movie is very good, but sort of blends together for me when you talk about all the great movies that happened around that time in Hollywood. Groundbreaking concept, but slightly formulaic in its execution of the 90s era. Now believe it or not, Megalon and Legion were not able to even make this list. Look, I adore these kaijus. Their designs are incredible, especially when you look at what they're based on. Megalon with his 70s-inspired tokusatsu roots, and Legion with his modernized HR Geiger-like detail. They have a variety of powers, and their origins are as night and day from each other as possible. Incredibly cool monsters that would make the list in almost any other kaiju-inspired top 10. Alright, alright. So now we get everything pushed off the board now. So let's start with this list. Number 10, Mosquito. Man, this is a movie that certainly is the epitome of a labor of love. When I first saw this flick as a young man of 12 or 13, I believe, I was floored with it. You had giant bugs, a naked girl, and tons of gore. It touched every fiber in my little heart. 
And upon watching this movie now, uh, yeah, I could see a lot of its flaws. The digital effects have aged horribly, and the acting really stands out bad in parts. But honestly, that just adds to the charm. The title monsters are normal mosquitoes that have fed upon the blood of a recently deceased alien that had crash landed on Earth. The mosquitoes grow to about the size of a normal person, if you consider their wings and legs, and begin to drain humanity of their blood. And boy, those scenes are just frightening. They stick their little noses where they shouldn't and start to suck up all that vital blood. And you actually get to see the blood flow into their translucent abdomens. It's funny, but scary at the same time. It's just all those little details in the film that just make it a hoot to watch. It's basically a Night of the Living Dead story near the end, with the band of people holding up in a house with monsters outside. But, yeah, the mosquito practical effects still look pretty darn good. I just love all the detail on them. By the way, this movie just got a 20th anniversary DVD release. You should really think about picking that up if you like these kind of movies. Number 9, The Fly, from the original 58 film. Now before I get to explain this, yes, the remake is vastly superior to the original in a lot of ways. Acting, effects, and music are just levels better. But I always felt the battle of the human mind versus the insect mind was better conveyed in the original. It was a real struggle, and not the slowly degrading morality of the remake which was used as a metaphor for degenerate diseases like AIDS. In this film, the human can be seen several times fighting with the destructive insect. And it's better conveyed with this head costume than the super ultra bulky one from the sequel. The greens and yellows of the eyes and claws look magnificent on the vivid colors of the film. It really stands out with the metallic-like insect look. Though, I will admit, the little sucker mouth part is a bit hokey. It might be anatomically correct, but it certainly looks a little bit goofy. But all that gets pushed aside when the doctor is begging for his wife to crush his head and arm in a hydraulic press to kill him before the insect's zeal overtakes his mind. It's a perfect metaphor for the swarming of darkness that began to course over the man's soul when he so callously thrusted himself into his own experiments. It's a neat little sci-fi film that certainly has influenced a lot of films today. And he's a bug, even if he doesn't have six legs. He was based on a six-legged insect. Number 8, Bug, from 1975. Oh man, you really don't get any more of a generic title for your killer insect movie, do ya? But this film was certainly far from being formulaic in its execution. The title creatures are large prehistoric underground cockroaches that are released by an earthquake. They are played by real-life Madagascar hissing cockroaches and some props. So they're not all that big, but what makes them so dangerous is that they can start fires by rubbing their legs together. And they use this ability in really neat ways. They crawl on people's skin and clothes and cause the victims to burst into flames. They crawl into a car's tailpipe and cause it to explode. All in all, they're pretty unique deaths. The creatures also have this weird electronic-like jibber-jabber when they talk. Eventually, though, all these monsters die off because of the low air pressure on the surface. All except one, and that's kept alive by a really dumb scientist. He actually thinks it's a pretty terrific idea to breed this prehistoric survivor with its modern-day counterpart. Needless to say, this doesn't go over all that well because the new generation of bugs becomes even more deadly. They eat flesh and become super intelligent. They form words in a wall like some demented marching band formation. And they learn how to fly and turn their bodies into red-hot fireballs. It's a strange movie, but it was the 70s, and it still creeps me out to this day. Certainly worth a watch if you have the time. Number 7, The Deadly Mantis. Ah, uh, now we finally get into some truly giant bugs. This was a creature that I saw very young as a kid, and I remember being floored by it. The film is your very stereotypical 50s giant monster romp, I will admit. A gigantic 200-foot-long prehistoric praying mantis is released from his icy prison in the Arctic because of a South Seas volcano. The creature wastes no time and begins to terrorize the world all the while roaring like a lion, which I thought was pretty cool back in the day makes him stand out from all the high-pitched squealing of other giant bugs. Boats, civilians, monolithic government landmarks, and even Eskimos are not safe from this creature. And even though it's just a giant mantis, the prop they made just looked amazing. You get to see this creature do everything. Swipe its scythe-like arms, walk, and even fly for gosh sake. The amount of intricate detail in the armor of the body, limbs, and face are a true testament to the quality of work in the FX department. It was so great that I didn't even notice the bug didn't even have any antenna. You know, those appendages that a real man toy actually has. 
I'm not too sure why they were left off, but the nerd monster fan of me says they probably broke off when it was frozen in the ice. Or maybe giants of his size didn't really need a ton of sensory organs. But there's no denying how cool this monster is. He's big, bad, and deadly. The film is really fun for any giant monster fan. Number 6, Ants, from the 1974 film, Phase 4. I feel like I have to defend this choice a little bit, since this is a movie about normal-sized ants. While they are normal-sized insects, they are mutated through an unknown cosmic event that gives them the ability to grow super intelligent and gain a hive mind. Throughout the film, these creatures display unholy-like veracity in their constant attacks on nearby humans. They even use smoothed-out rocks to reflect sunlight onto a metal building, which has had its air conditioning destroyed, to try to burn out their human-like targets. It's frightening how organized these creatures can be. Now, unlike normal ants, you, the viewer, begins to feel for these monsters. There's a scene in the film where the ants have undergone a setback in their plans and suffered major casualties to their horde. A single ant walks into a huge chamber that is littered with rows and rows of dead ants that are meticulously placed with care and remorse. These creatures, a pest that would be classified as a mindless animal that only cares about the hive, and not about how many of his kind had to die to defend that said hive, is crying and mourning for his dead. He was a general that had to see his soldiers that won't be coming back. It's a powerful scene and moving to the soul beyond all belief. And this is only one of only but of a handful of intricately designed set pieces that are photographed and can see by the talents of Kent Middleham and Saul Bass. It's a really underestimated film that needs to be seen to be understood. They may be normal ants, but they really captured my heart and my memory. Long live our ant overlords. Number 5, The Arachnid Warriors from Starship Troopers I was kind of hesitant on this entry since arachnid is the name of the species, but if you count them, there are six legs. Technicalities aside though, really these things just blew me away back in the day when they came out. All of them did in fact. Everything from the plasma bugs, the hoppers, and of course, the tankers. As the series went on, there got to be more bugs, but really none of them shined so brilliant as the brightly colored Battlefront soldier. The warrior bugs are like ants on steroids. They're the grunts of the arachnids, able to reproduce in gigantic numbers that are used to overrun their foes. They're fast and vicious and use their scythe-like arms. Their mouths are mandibles, really don't look like a mouth or mandible. They resemble more of a weird bird-like beak. Nevertheless though, these appendages can tear a human in half like he was tissue paper. It's a really odd design choice, but boy, it works so well in this context. The creatures look completely alien and foreign, and yet at the same time, very identifiable to be some sort of bug. You don't ever feel sorry for one of these guys when they get splattered across the screen in a hail of bullets. They're just a deadly form of cannon fodder, meant to be hated by the audience and sacrificed for the greater good of the hive. Bred to thrive in the harshest environments and attack any foe with devilish-like intent and callousness. These creatures are certainly worthy to be on any monster list. Number 4, Batra from the Godzilla series. Oh boy, I tell you, this monster should have been doomed from the start in its movie. It was in developmental hell for countless Godzilla scripts, previously known as a creature called Gigamoth in those, and it's basically a dark version of a vastly more popular monster, and hint. It should have just been a palette swap monster that would come and go and be forgotten. Man, I am so glad I was wrong on this guy. Batra is totally his own monster and stands tall in Godzilla's rogue gallery. Introduced in Godzilla vs. Mothra, the battle for Earth, Batra found its origins from being a physical manifestation of the mana power of Earth. He was created to protect the planet from anything that should harm her, and that just so happened to be humans. So this dark moth didn't take too kindly to us and proceeded to wreck everything in his larval and adult form. I can't say enough good things about this character's design though. It's black and armored with bright splashes of yellows and reds that resemble more like blood and war paint. This creature also has so much depth to his character. It's a weapon that believes its only purpose is to kill anything that threatens the earth. It wasn't until much later that it's shown a different path in life, which is why I think this character resonates with a lot of fans. Destiny and purpose are not bestowed to us at birth, but rather through our choices that we make in life. Good and evil are subjective to definition, as Batra can contest to. Where there is light, there must be darkness, and that is where Batra will stir if we continue to hurt our little world. Hmm, just something to think about. Number 3, Meganulon from the 1956 film, Rodan. 
These creatures terrified the crap out of me when I was a kid. I mean, honestly, I was more afraid of these things than the two Rodans that showed up later in the movie. And all of this stems from just one scene in that movie. A cop and two miners, all tied together with a rope, wade shoulder deep into a flooded mine shaft. Things go really bad as the first guy in the line is attacked by some unknown force under the water. He screams and is ripped under the stagnant pool. The second guy in the line, the cop, shoots at the water but he too is pulled under. Third guy in the line gets a little smart and cuts the rope before he gets pulled under as well. But it's all for naught as a stalking shadow-like monster runs him down and brutally murders him before he can make it out. It's a horrifying scene. Right up there with Friday the 13th or The Thing. These pantomime horse costume monsters still look pretty good to this day. A little cheap, but there's a ton of detail in that head and clawed arms. But I honestly just love the overall size of the creature. Using three men so they can make it look like the creature had six legs really helped to sell the archaic power of this thing. I actually prefer these ones over the 2001 version that showed up in Godzilla x Megaguirus. Those might actually look a bit more real, but I just prefer the aesthetics of the originals. They looked and moved like tanks, crawling forth into a hail of bullets, roaring and flashing their claws like a bear that's ready to attack. I hold a big place in my heart for these monsters, and that's why they rank so high up on this list. Number 2. The Giant Ants from the 1955 film, Them. Without a doubt, this is a film that paved the way for many things on this list. In fact, it's the first and originator of the big bug features that would continue for years. These ants were bombarded by nuclear radiation and had grown to the size of about, mm, small cars. They lived in the New Mexico desert and made the locals pay for their choices of living there. Families are ripped and torn apart as the scouts forage for food because of the demands of the hive. Eventually, the humans in the film force the queen to leave and try to build another hive in the sewers of L.A. She tried to lay more queens and seek to expand her insect empire. These monsters and this film are just amazing on so many levels. The giant mechanical props of the ants may look a bit stiff from time to time, but the way they're filmed with the cutting shots and panning techniques really makes them seem so much more alive and dangerous than they really are. The details in the eyes and the straggly hair really give these creatures a very unique look almost like weird versions of a woolly mammoth. The movie was originally meant to be shot in color, with the ants being spray painted to be this purple-like green color. I have to be honest, thank God it was changed to black and white. I just don't think the movie would have been nearly as successful or fondly remembered as it is nowadays if you saw giant purple ants on the screen. It would have really drawn attention to the static-like nature of the limited mechanics in the machines. Using the black and white gave it this very gravely-like feel. It looked like something that was more depth than tethered to reality. But I gotta admit, the film's trailer certainly got it right on the nose in its promotion of this giant bug favorite. Terror, horror, excitement, and mystery. Them is a movie that deserves to be watched a thousand times over. Not only because of its significance on this list, but to films in general. Now I know what you're thinking. How can the originators of the giant bug movie not be in the number one spot? That seems sort of blasphemous, doesn't it? Well... While they may be the starters of the genre, they're certainly not the most popular, which shouldn't be too hard to guess if you actually knew me in real life. Oh well, I'll warn it forward. Number 1. Mothra from the Godzilla series Come on, you had to have seen this one coming. And to be honest here, you can use any version of Mothra from anywhere in her film timeline. It could be the ravaging god on a warpath to get back her fairies, like in the original, or it could be the protector of humanity of the Earth, like it was in the 90s. It could even be the soul-imbued Yamato guardian that tickles your fancy. Whichever one you choose, they're all great. For those of you who have lived under a rock for the last 60 years, Mothra is a giant butterfly god that hails from a place called Infant Island. In most of her incarnations, she starts out as an egg, awaiting for any time that she will be needed. When that demand is met, she breaks free and goes about any means to accomplish her devoir. In this form, she is a massive caterpillar. This is her larval state and is oftentimes considered to be her weaker form. If this shape is unable to finish her goal, she will spin a cocoon and grow into a full-size hurricane-wrecking butterfly. This lepidopteran from hell can destroy an entire city just by flying over it. And in this form, she even has enough power to match the mighty Godzilla himself. Now, as the series went on, this form got a freaking butt-ton of new abilities. She originally started out with tornado-like winds and poison powder from the flapping of her wings. It then went over to laser blasts from her antenna. 
And then over to Omega Breast Cannon, a huge green Kamehameha that she could shoot from her chest. And yes, to the Godzilla fans out there, I know that last one was technically Mothra Leo, but honestly, I'm roping any version of Mothra in this list. It's just a different version of the same monster, sort of like Godzilla. Same origins, but different looks and powers. But, that being said, I just love, love, love this monster. And how can you not? Her design is so memorable with that Muppet-like face and beautifully crafted wings. Mothra, without a doubt, will always play second fiddle to Godzilla. But in this list, she's clearly number one all the way. And with that, that ends our top 10 big bad killer bugs list. As I said in the beginning of the video, it's okay if you disagree with me on this list. It's all based on personal experiences and opinions. If you feel differently on how you would arrange this list with candidates or candidates that I omitted, please feel free and write down in the comments down below. Or better yet, make your own video. I would love to see what other people would craft as their own top 10 list. I really enjoy seeing what other people's opinions are about one of my favorite subgenre to monster films. There's just so many of these films out there. So I'm sure your list would both be wide and varied from mine. Well, except for the number one slot. I know, I'm just joking. But really, I would love to see what others' opinions are. But for now, this book is finished and the library is closed. Until next time, my friends. Have fun, stay safe, and I'll catch you on that flip side.